Many people have heard the relationship between fraud and Benford's Law, and Benford's Law is taking a look at the number digit pattern. So let's take a look at this. Imagine you had an amount field and you had $10, $15, $100, $12. $12. Every one of those starts with a 1, so that the first digit is a 1 in that case of, of every one of those numbers started with a 1. Now, Benford figured out that in a random set of data, the number one should show up 30% of the time, or 30.1%, and then 17.6% uh, for two, and, and so on and so forth. Now, not all data is random, especially business data. It doesn't tend to be random, but, but a, a lot of it can tend to be random. I mean, a, a vendor master file, a payables file, a, a general ledger file uh, it actually does have a, a, a trend to it which is quite random. Uh, when you have payroll files they tend to be a little less random because you, people get paid the same amount a lot of times and uh, for sales pricing same thing because a lot of 1999s will show up in your pricing uh, because people price things in a, a similar fashion but if you get a sense of randomness what we can do though is apply this technique to our data anyway and just see how far off are we from the random course of things. Now if things are made up, uh, data is made up, then it has a higher likelihood of, of breaking the Benford trend and therefore being detected as a fraud. Now this data sheet which will be provided already has some calculated fields and the calculated fields are denoted with the yellow highlight and, and the ones we've entered in over, over here with the, the grayish highlight. But Benford 1 is this first digit of the number. So if I scroll over here, hopefully I can see it. We have 2657 and I will just get that. So you have 2657.99 and you have the Benford of 2, you have 4.48, Benford of 4, etc. And you can also set up a Benford 2 digit and a Benford 3 digit which would be the first two digits and three digits of those numbers. We did that utilizing the left function. So we see here equal left B2 comma 1 and in that case B2 is that invoice amount field and we're saying comma 1 so that first digit in that case and as you look over to the Benford 2 and 3 all we've done is we have the equal left in this case B2 the same field as Benford 1 B2 but in this case we're now asking for two digits as opposed to one Benford 3 three digits as opposed to two or one and in order for us to complete this analysis, what we're going to do is to insert a pivot table by going to the insert menu, pivot table. And generally speaking, the full amount of your data will be selected, but just take a look and make sure. In this case, I know that it is, so we're going to go forward with that. And what I can do is I can select Benford 1 as our digit over here. Now, I'm going to get rid of this blank and zero in these cases because they're, they're just a bit of an annoyance in this. And then what I'll do is I will then add to here the count of Benford 1. Now, what I've done is just, you know, drag that in. I can drag it again. It's a little, little confusing. So this field here is kind of the second one that I dragged in. I can click on it and select value field settings. And upon selecting that, I can say show value as percentage of column. And by doing that, I will now have the percentages of column in this column next to the actual counts that are to the left. Again, these numbers being very close to Benford's Law, which I actually copied into the sheet over to the right. And I'm just going to bring that over so that we can take a look at how off is our data to Benford's Law. Just by eyeballing it here, you can see we're very, very close, if not exact, in, in many cases. So some truth to the theory there of Benford's Law. And what I'd like to now do is take the information from the pivot table, just these percentages here, and copy and paste that over to this area here. And in this particular case, just now graph these numbers, this being Benford's Law. 
and this one being the actual data. Now that I graph this information, I can say insert chart. In this case, uh, why don't we do a line chart and just take a look at the line. Now, for every chart, I, I always like to move it to its own sheet, Al although you can expand the chart within that Excel sheet uh, to take a look at it a little deeper. I always like it, having it on my own sheet. It's a lot easier. And, and you can see where Benford's Law is, is above or under or close to the data, but, but in most cases, the actual data is actually very close, if not exact, uh, to Benford's Law. Obviously, you're going to want to look for cases where the actual data, the red line, is higher than Benford's Law. And, and again, that would show that there's just more of that digit. And in our case here, we do have a little bit at the 1 mark. So, you know, we'll just keep that in the back of our mind as well as the 4 and 5. You would do this as well at the second and third digit graphs. Another graph that we created, and, and we can go back to this actual uh, pivot chart table, but instead, I actually created this one already. This one's called Benford Amounts, and, and this is in the spreadsheet that you'll get along uh, with this. The invoice amount field is actually used as the row label in this particular uh, uh, pivot table. And what we've done is then put a count of how many $19.42s and 12 and 700s and all that, and uh, also a summary of that uh, from a total amount point of view. To sort it in the way that we sorted it, we actually clicked on the invoice amount field and went to more sort options. And in the more sort options, we did descending by the count of invoice amount, which is the column right over here, this count of invoice amount here. So let's click on OK. Again, it, it is sorted already for you. And it is interesting to see the $19.42, again, the one being something that was in our chart as being out of line, is showing up in the first two numbers or, or dollar amounts that were paid that, again, are showing up a lot. In this case, 61 of those, 28 of those. Now, to see the actual details behind these, we can just double click, and then that will actually create another sheet called Sheet 2 in this case that will have just an extraction of the $19.42 items, which were the highest items per the Benford chart. So another way of looking at the data, maybe it, it's a way of cutting to the chase a bit, is to actually just take a look at the invoice amount counts from high to low and let that guide where your deviations are. In summary, Benford's Law is a digit pattern test, so it's going to look at those numbers 1, 2, and 3 in the beginning of the amount field, let's say. The random numbers in your data are going to have this expected probability curve. However, if you have numbers that are fabricated, it could be something where they are uh, showing up as non-random, and hence they're just going to show out of line. So there's going to be a lot more ones or fours or fives. Could be fabricated, but it also could just be a process inefficiency where you have a lot of 1942s or $19.42 as we had because we're writing out a weekly check to the cleaning person and we should just go to a monthly billing as an example. There, there needs to be a lot of change to show up on the actual report or the deviation report from a numeric sense and you know that then travels into the amount sense but I, I do feel that you should look at the top deviations because it could show a pattern like fraud where someone is posting these amounts over and over again into the system.